People come into your life for a reason. Dad used to say that before Mom ran off. After that, he mostly just drank. Things were different for Don and I. When we met, I was sweeping the floor at Susie's diner. He came in with some workers, but he didn't try to flirt or cop a feel like the others. He just ordered a coffee and sat there, watching me. Oh. Oh. When my shift was over, he offered to walk me home. I don't know how to describe that walk. We talked and laughed and eventually kissed. It felt like love. It felt like a fairy tale. I can't tell you if Calum was made that night or one of the ones that followed. But I think it has to be that night. That one perfect night. Don and I moved in together, but then, well, he died. According to the supervisor, his safety harness failed when he was working on the top of the Ferris wheel. Don was there one moment, and then gone. Sometimes people leave your life for no reason. I was three months pregnant with Callum. Fairy tale fucking over. So then she had a lot of expectations for that baby to be perfect. Yep. Well, and but it also kind of gives a hint why she wouldn't look at it and just be like, yay, because it's also a reminder of her dead, you know, love. Yeah. <gasps> it took me a second to understand what I was looking at. <laughs> So it must be, that thing, it must be the thing that operates the ride when we're doing whatever. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like she has a lot of personal history. With Callum! Tell mommy where you are! Go ahead, what? It sounds like she has a lot of personal history with the park because... Her husband died here. Yeah. Stay where you are. A lot of people idolize their children. You hear them talking about their kids and just the way they talk? Their fucking voices make me want to vomit. My angel likes to read, and little Johnny is so good on the piano. Fuck those people! You give up nine months of your life carrying them, you traumatize yourself giving birth to them, and then you spend the rest of your life as their slave. Wiping asses, mopping a piss, feeding them. Little life-sucking monsters who take and take and take until... We all go insane. Any parent who pretends otherwise is just dishonest. That's called choice supportive bias. I am honest. Callum really grinds my gears, and he owes me everything. Everything! It served the little fuck right if I just abandoned him. Whoa. So, this is kind of reminding me of the Babadook. Which, a lot of people, for some reason, like, I watched the movie, and then I was like, I understand what this is about, and then, I think it was because I watched a lot of reviews from people who identify as a man who would never be the person who gives birth to a child. Mm -hmm. So the movie, to me, I was like, this is very clearly about a woman who's having a lot of grief and a lot of stress about taking care of her child. Yeah. And the Baba Duke was a representation of her, like, emotional turmoil. Mm-hmm. 
And at the end, like, the, the solution to the Babadook was her going into the basement every day and, like, facing the Babadook and feeding it and stuff, which is like, oh, every day she takes time to validate her feelings, basically. What's a Babadook? The Babadook was the quote-unquote monster. Oh. And her child kept going, the Babadook's coming, the Babadook's coming, and she gets more and more distressed. And every time she's distressed, the Babadook comes. Uh Uh-huh. Which is basically, from my perspective, she was the Babadook, and it was scaring her kid. Mm Mm-hmm. And she's like, he was like, you're not my mother. And she's like, I am your mother. Oh. And it was like, the Babadook would come and scare the shit out of her because, like, her child was just overwhelming her. And that scene, right, what she, that, the lady in the game said, what she just said right there... There's a scene where she's sitting at a table with her sister and, like, a bunch of other women who basically have it much better than her. Mm -hmm. Because they all have husbands, so... Somebody who can help with the child rearing responsibilities. Yeah, like that. So they're all like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And she just sits there and she goes... You're all bullshit. You have no idea how happy and how great you all have it. Because the same thing happened... Is that her husband died before the baby was born. Mm. And so she's like... And then she has this child who loves her a lot, but it's so... Sometimes it's so overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the way that she solves her problem with the Babadook is by, like, every day going to the basement and, like, facing it. Mm-hmm. Instead of ignoring it. And then I felt like a lot of reviewers just kind of didn't they didn't they didn't understand like the subtext or they were like i didn't find it particularly scary and i was like i don't think it was supposed the to point be. wasn't yeah 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 it, yeah, yeah it wasn't it made me scared in a way i was like oh god like oh god this is like real life <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it was supposed to be like her dealing with like depression and grief and loss and then having to take care of a child that she loves but also overwhelms her a lot but also overwhelms her and then can you remind you of the dead loved one yes like because one of the very first lines of the child is go oh my daddy died when she when my mommy was being sent to take it to the hospital to give birth to me Aww. like it's just something that he knows mm-hmm. I always wanted to write this one never got around to do it before Yeah, what? But anyway, yeah, sometimes, you know, moms can feel really overwhelmed and feel like have a lot of peer pressure to feel like, to be like, oh I'm no. I'm taking care of everything. I'm everything's perfect. Fine. Yeah, like I'm, I have everything under control, and you know, and then that kind of magnifies the fact that like they're struggling and then it just kind of like yes snowballs and sometimes it's like to be like, it's okay to be a hot mess, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Like, I'm struggling, and I'm having a hard time. Like, it's okay. I don't know how to turn off the achievements. I'm sorry. Yeah. What do you want? We need to talk about Callum. What do you mean? What have you done to him? I... That's insulting. You and your boy are everything that this place doesn't want. The antithesis of what we stand for. Where is Callum? The poor child. He tried so hard to do what he was taught. He even left you a trail of breadcrumbs. But the park is just so hungry. Tell me where my son is. The witch has him now. Has both of you. No happy ending here, I'm afraid. Are we gonna eat it? Have you just, been? Are we gonna eat our son? Fool. You always were. Oh. We. Oh. Oh, oh. no, I'm. Oh, this is her giving birth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes women really do have PTSD from giving birth. So maybe yeah. she's had, it was very traumatic. Oh, God! Yeah. 
So this maybe this is a metaphor for her giving birth. It felt like a roller coaster. Moral of the story, motherhood is a nightmare. I know, I feel like they've been playing a lot of games that deal with like the very <laughs> Uh, moral of the story, sometimes motherhood is very, very hard, and that's okay, and you're not failing. Nope. So don't let anyone else make you feel like you're not doing a good enough job. Oh, look, more stuff. Oh, a flashlight. Take flashlight, but not the axe. The witch awaits. Ooh, are we gonna kill the witch? But now we can go into the dark cavern. Oh, yeah. I hope it takes me full circle. Otherwise, how do I use the... Calla, where are you? How do I use the... I guess it's just automatic, then? I guess so. Oh, we go out this way. Callum has bruises on his arms, finger marks. Someone has been hurting him. I've asked him, demanded really, to know where he got the marks. But he doesn't want to answer me. Something has scared him into silence. He doesn't dare talk. He's been changing too. Something sinister lurks in the darkness behind his eyes. I catch him staring at me at odd moments. In the night, he tosses and turns and cries out words that I cannot understand. When I try to soothe him, he snaps and bites at my fingers. I think he wants to talk to me. I think he wants to tell me. But they are watching him every minute of every day. They are whispering to him in his sleep, changing him. They are taking my baby away from me. I can save him. And there will be pain. But I love him, and in the end, he will understand why. Is this just like a giant metaphor for like she's hurting her child? Yeah, I'm. I'm getting the feeling that maybe she's hurting him, but she like doesn't know it, yeah. and like. This took like a. This game took a surprisingly dark turn. I like it, though, you know? I don't like it, but I like it, if that makes sense. I don't like it, but I like it, if that makes sense. I'm enjoying the storyline. What? Oh, there's a thing on the ground, I think. Is that... Maybe? Oh, there it is. The whole town was shocked by that one. Never found out who did it. Cotton candy corpse leaves sour taste in park goers' mouths. Oh, God. <laughs> Yesterday evening, visitors to Atlantic Island Park were shocked and horrified by, by the discovery of a dismembered corpse behind the cotton candy stand. According to the local I thought they ate him. Oh, yeah, me too. I thought they were like... <laughs> they got, yeah. I assumed, like, body parts in the cotton candy, people are eating it. And they're like, oh, this is a darker shade of pink than usual. No, like, I was assuming, like, somebody, like, ate a finger or something, and, like, people were getting, like, pieces of stuff. Anyways... <laughs> The corpse was discovered by a group of teenagers from Innsmouth Academy who noticed a pair of ravens tugging at something just out of sight behind the shack. Nathaniel Winter, the owner of Atlantic Island Park, has released the following statement. It is a true tragedy when something like this occurs, especially in a place that was designed to bring forth happiness and joy. The staff of Atlantic Park Island Park offer their condolences to the family and friends of the victim and will cooperate fully with authorities to help bring this case to rest. The Solomon Chronicle will provide daily updates on this story going forward. <sighs> ah, okay. What was that? Oh, this poor lady. 
having to go through a lot. Maybe there was something there that we missed. Maybe. Oh, there's teddy bears. know where that sound came from, but oh well. Magic, just chill out, man. <laughs> we probably have to click something or touch something. Or, you know, there was a left and a right option. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh. Oh. Poor bastard. Who did this to You're him? You're not worried? We're just gonna stare at the corpse now? Poor bastard. You stare at him now. and there were still footsteps being heard. Oh. Hmm. Oh. Oh, what's this now? Oh. Pills? The, these are mine. the real world, I think. All that you love will be carried away. Here's the, the guy, our buddy. Is that? Oh, teddy bears. Don't touch me. Stop and read the newspaper. Future times. Belly button is the signature of your person. What? Of your personal creator. I believe her name was Mama. Every seventeenth child is a magnet for sinfulness, made omniscient by broken fires in the coastal strain. We don't believe that the Sarth Earth belongs to battered goats and shamrock afterbirth. Only the truly naked wrens of righteous indignation are severed by war-crossed cleavages. And trust exercise arrhythmia. Beaumont will come to the island bearing the talisman and he will shatter the. I don't. What? Seals. Seals that bind the ortho. Doxy of corruption. Only it when says will. Orth 
Orthodoxy of corruption. Only then will priests shoot, sluts reveal, have housewives <laughs> pontificate, and delayed messiahs make. This doesn't make any sense. Axles for the rescue of Tango and Cash. Sweet the temptress who gripes, grips the shaft, twelves, twel, twists. Twel, twists the shaft, absconding in third age, something into fourth age darkness, while good gods lie writhing on this shattered face of the earth. Gallo has sweetness and grace, but her days are numbered and heavy glass pisted. Hives break before frozen wills and calligraphic, calligraphic actress in pencil and paper pornography. All seeing eye will provide decade long updates on this story going forward. Oh, gosh. Oh, God, no. 